it's about time we get into nouns. Well, hello there. Thank you for coming back. Or if this is your first time, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoy this session. Today, we're going to cover nouns. Now, previously, we've covered the Hebrew alphabet. That was in week one. In week two, we covered Hebrew nouns. And then last week, we covered syllabification, how to pronounce words and syllables. But it's only until this week that we're really diving into the nuts and bolts of Hebrew, and that is by learning nouns. Eventually, we'll learn adjectives and we'll learn verbs. But right now, we're starting with nouns. So let's start by looking at English. Think about English. We have nouns in English, right? Uh, nouns are simply words for people, places, things, bat, wolf, ox, right? These are all things in the animate, animate, inanimate, animate, in the universe. These are all things in the universe. Now, that's the singular. English has some funny rules to make things plural. So for bat, you add an S, bats, okay? And we've got wolf. This one's funny. You change the F to a V and add an ES. Wolves. Ox is funny. It becomes oxen. Fox. It's not foxen. No, it's foxes. Okay. Goose becomes geese. Mouse becomes mice. Friendly becomes friendlies. Person becomes people. There's a lot of rules in English to make plural and plural means more than one. Okay. In English. So Hebrew is not unlike English in that it has plenty of rules. I would say it has maybe less rules. Uh, depends on how you look at it. So we're going to cover Hebrew and show you all the different kinds of singular and plurals that you can have. There are exceptions to the rule, but you're going to see a lot of patterns that make it really simple to identify. Now, I will say this. As you learn your vocabulary, learn whether they're masculine or feminine. It will help you, although it's not really absolutely essential, but it would be helpful. Now, as you can see here, we have uh, in Hebrew masculine and feminine. If you're familiar with Spanish, for example, there is masculine and feminine. Now that's not to say that these words are strictly for males and strictly for females. That's actually not true. There are um, situations where there's a fem feminine looking noun, uh, but it has no correlation to gender whatsoever. Uh, so these are basically naming conventions masculine or feminine and i believe it's because many times but not always when it's masculine it's for masculine or male things but as i said before that's not always true okay so uh we have sus that is the masculine singular noun for horse sus plural would be susim Horses, more than one. Dual, yes, there's a dual form. Susayim. Susayim. That means two horses. Okay. So masculine, sus. Masculine singular, sus. Then we have the feminine. Here's a different word. You, you might have heard of this one. Torah. Torah means teaching or law. It is feminine singular. The plural is toroth. Toroth. Laws. More than one. The dual, torothayim. And that is two laws. Okay? So keep in mind that the masculine singular has no ending. It is ending less. 
So we're looking at the word Seuss. Seuss is there. There is no ending. Remember that most words in Hebrew, but not all, have three consonants. So in this case, Samek, Vav, Samek. Okay. Then to get the plural, you add Pyrrhic under the final consonant, and then you add a Yod and a final Mem. Okay. Pronouncing that Im sound. So in the case of Sus, we have Susim. The dual form is very similar, except that it uses the diphthong, the pathak, and then yod hirik plus final mem. And that's how you know it's dual. Okay? Susayim. For the feminine in the singular, it does have an ending, unlike the masculine singular. So in the case of Torah, the comet's hey at the end, the comet's under the final consonant of the noun, and then it adds a hey, Torah. Okay, so the the ending there is comet's hey. In the plural, it uses a holom vav plus a tav, Torah. In the dual, uh, the feminine dual can be just like the masculine dual, uh, or as in this case for Torah, it adds a, a, a comet. So it kind of blends in a way, not really, but kind of blends the singular and plural to, together, uh, but using the diphthong. So under the third consonant, you have the comet, and then the and then the tav, and then the diphthong with the with the final name. Torathayim. Now, there are three dual nouns you need to memorize because they only appear in the Bible in the dual form. And those three words are Mayim, waters, or waters, Shemayim, heaven or heavens, and Mitzrayim. Egypt, literally meaning from bondages. So one thing to note, though, is the lexical form of a word, which means the dictionary definition. When you go to look it up, it will always be in the singular form of that word. Now, each word is going to be either masculine or feminine. Uh, so if you learn that as you learn your vocabulary, that can be helpful. Uh, but the lexical form will always be looked up in the singular form. So, for example, if you are working through a Hebrew text and it and you come to Toroth and you're like, I don't remember what Toroth is, you would not find Toroth in the in the dictionary or what's called the lexicon. You would find Torah. So you have to know how to work backwards from the plural to the singular so you can go look up the lexical meaning of the word. So you would look up Torah in the uh, in the lexicon. You would look up Sus in the lexicon. You would not look up Susim. You would not look up Toro. Another note is that uh, while the masculine singular is endingless and the feminine singular does have the ending with the comet te, there are examples, although by comparison, uh, they're rare, where the feminine singular can also be endingless. So a good example of that would be Eretz, land. There is no ending on that. It just happens to be feminine. You have to know that or you have to look it up and learn that it's feminine. There are other Hebrew endings to be aware of. For Torah, we have the comets he in the singular. But there are several other forms that can end in a pathak tav or a uh, segel tav or a hirik yod tav or finally a shirik tav. Uh, and all, all of these are feminine singular. So there's a lot of variation for feminine. So you have Torah, bath, keshet, berit, malkuth. So Torah is teaching, bath is daughter, Keshef, 
means bow, or it can be used as rainbow. Berith is uh, covenant. Malchuth is kingdom. Now, there's another note here in that sometimes you'll get defective writing. If you remember uh, from our lesson on nouns, sometimes you'll see defective writing where a long, uh, changeable or unchangeable vowel can defect to a uh, shorter version. So uh, with feminine plural, and you have the oath endings, the holom vav with a with the tav, sometimes the vav will drop out and the uh, holom will will retain with the last consonant and then it'll add the tav. So look at eda, for example. Feminine singular, eda. Eda means congregation. So you could have the plural in its plene form, the full form. Plene is Greek for full or fullness. And it would be edoth with the holom vav and a tav. But in the defective form, you might see it as edoth. Same sound, right? Same, same pronunciation, but the vav has dropped. The olam attaches. The holom attaches to the end of the last consonant, and then you have the tav. Congregations. Now you have some examples that are really straightforward. There's no vowel changes, and when it comes to vowel changes, you don't need to have these memorized. You need to be able to recognize them so you can work your way through the word and figure out what it what it is. Because if you need to look up what the word is in the lexical form, you have to work your way backwards to the singular form. So it's not about memorizing it, although you can and more power to you if you do. It's more about being able to recognize what's going on and work your way backwards to the singular form so that you can then go look up the word. So there are several patterns in terms of there's no vowel changes. There are pre-protonic vowel changes and pre so pro-pretonic means it's the third syllable before the accented syllable. And that's assuming the accented syllable is in the tonic location. Okay, so you have the tonic, which is last. You have the uh, pre-tonic, which is second to last. And you have the pro-pre-tonic, which is third from last. Okay, so with davar, for example, the uh, tonic uh, syllable in the singular is var, davar. Okay, that's where the accent is. It's, it's last. When you make it plural, it would normally sound something like davarim. So the the tonic is im, okay, which means the pretonic would be var, and the pro pretonic would be ba. However, um, in this example, you're going to see that the initial comment reduces to a vocal shava. Instead of davarim, it becomes davarim. There we go. Okay, so that's pro pretonic vowel changes. You have seglet noun changes. Seglet nouns, usually but not always, are nouns that have a segel or a sere, and the instead of a normal tonic accenting, it actually puts the accent at the front of the word in its singular form. So what's really important on seglet nouns is that the 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 first syllable is accented, which is really unusual. The best examples you have are melech, king. Well, it becomes melachim in the plural, so that uh, se that segel becomes a vocal shava. Not all segelit nouns have a segel. Most of them do, but the key feature is that they uh, they have that initial accent up front, and those those nouns will uh, have a the equivalent of a pro pretonic vowel change in that it will start with a, an initial vocal shava plus a comment. There are geminate nouns. Geminate in this case means two or doubled. And what happened with these Hebrew nouns is they originally were doubled. Uh, so if you look at, look them up in the uh, in the lexicon and you see the the initial root, you would see a doubling of consonants. So am was actually amam, ayin mem mem. But over time. Uh, one of the memes fell off in the singular. In the plural, it's still there, as seen by the Dagesh Forte. 
the geminate plural of um is amin with a doggish forte there. And then much like in English, Hebrew has irregular nouns. So for example, in English, we have mouse and then mice. We have person and we have people. These are irregular nouns that have completely different looking uh, plurals from their singular counterparts. Hebrew does the same thing. So uh, ish, man, becomes anashim, men. Isha, woman, becomes nashim, plural. You just have to memorize. There's no other way around it. Just like you have to in English, you got to memorize some plural forms in Hebrew. So let's dive into each of these patterns just to get more familiar. So the ones for no vowel changes, they're straightforward. You've got sheer song, sheer song becomes shirim songs, oath, which is sign, oath, oath, signs, shalom, not to be confused with shalom, shalom, it's almost like cologne, shalom, it means dream, the plural is chalamoth, dreams, rehov, street, rehovoth, streets, kochav, star, kochavim, stars. Then we have the propretonic vowel changes. Devar, word. Devarim, words. Levav, heart. Levavoth, hearts. This one's actually a uh, geminate, but sometimes you will say, see lev instead of levav. This particular word has kept the geminate consonants with the, with the double uh, bit. Anan, cloud. Ananim, clouds. Chatzer, courtyard. Chatzeroth, courts, courtyards. And for the segolets, which we have a lot to look at, Melech, king, Melachim, kings, Nefesh, soul or life, Nefashoth, souls, lives. It could even be people. Cherev, Cherev, sword, Charevoth, swords, Sefer. Scroll or book, Sifarim, scrolls, Bokar, morning. So if you want to say good morning, Bokar Tov, good morning, Bikarim, mornings, Zera, seed, Zeraim, seeds, Baal, Lord. This is Baal worship, Lord worship, the Alim, literally Baals or Lords, Naar, young man. Ne'arim, young men. Then we have our geminate nouns. Am, which was originally amam. So in the plural, it becomes amim with the dagesh forte uh, in the mem. And that means uh, people. The plural is peoples. Kates, which is arrow. Its original uh, stem was katsats. So doubling of, a, of the tsere. And as you can see in the plural, it's chitzim with a dagesh forte in the tsare. And, and that would be arrows. And last we have chok, chok, statute, ordinance. Chukim, statutes, ordinances. Its original stem was uh, chakak. So doubling of the kaf. And last we have numerous irregular vowel examples there are more the only way to know is uh to learn them uh when you learn your vo vocabulary so we have ish man anashim men isha woman uh, nashim women we have ear city irim cities av father avoth Fathers, that one's interesting because it uses the feminine for the plural. This is one good example of when, even though we're talking about masculine versus feminine, it uses the feminine ending to refer to a masculine actual being. Just because it's masculine and feminine doesn't mean necessarily that the 
thing for which that word or, or syntax represents is necessarily the same thing. Take that for, for what it's worth. Buy it. House. Batim. Houses. Bath. Daughter. Banoth. Daughters. Bane. Son. Banim. Sons. Yom. Day. Yamim. Days. So that pretty much covers the noun system. You know how to recognize the main parts of a noun. You know how to recognize singular. You know how to recognize plural. And you know how to recognize dual. You've learned three specific dual forms that only occur, occur in the dual. And you've seen that there are some exceptions to the rules. But ultimately what this means is you now know how to see a noun, figure out how to look it up in the lexicon or the dictionary and determine what it means. And that's really important. So that's it for today. Come back next week and we'll start to dive into what we call the definite article, which in English is the word the and how it works in Hebrew and the conjunction vav or in English, and or but. I hope you found this lesson helpful. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you are, let me know in the comments down below. Are you enjoying this series? And uh, what are you looking forward to? Is there anything in particular that you've really enjoyed so far? Now, I know it's been a bit dry. We're, we've been dealing with kind of the basics, the super basics, the kindergarten level basics, but that's okay. It will get exciting, especially as we get into verbs. But already, now that you're into nouns, it is going to get more exciting, I promise. So stick with it. If you've been discouraged by how dry it is, don't worry. Clear those throats with those chets. But it will come. It will get fun. If you haven't uh, already, please follow this blog. I would appreciate the support. And if you did like this video, if you did find it helpful, hit that like button. I'd appreciate it. With that, I bid you adieu. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.